Good afternoon, Chandler. I'm Councilmember Mark Stewart. And earlier this week, Governor Ducey announced that restaurants were able to open for dine-in service with safety and social distancing practices in place to protect both businesses and patrons. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to three individuals to discuss how these lifted restrictions are panning out and what is being seen in our community and nationwide. First here today with us is Maricopa County District 2 Supervisor and President and CEO of the Arizona Restaurant Association, Steve Chukri. Hi, Steve. Right. For the past 18 years, Steve has served as President and CEO of the Arizona Restaurant Association. In 2012, Steve was elected to serve as the Maricopa County Supervisor for District 2 and has been proudly serving his community since he took office in January of 2013. Also joining us is Jared Flowers, a good friend of mine, and he's the Vice President for National Restaurant Consultants. Jared devoted his life to the restaurant industry. He's managed in varying roles from a general manager, executive chef, partner, and multi-unit leader and owner, and has held management positions for high volume restaurant chains throughout the United States. And he is the best guy to go have lunch with because he knows all the hot spots. So thanks for being here, Jared. And then finally, we're joined by Thank Mike you. Maradino, owner of Crust and Ostrich, right here in downtown Chandler. Crust has been a staple in our downtown for over five years with a well-kept secret downstairs, the ostrich, a speakeasy style bar, don't tell anybody. Mike has been in the restaurant industry his entire life, learning from his Sicilian roots. Steve, Jared, Mike, thanks so much for joining me today. So let's get started uh, with a handful of questions and we're just gonna chat about kind of what's going on in the restaurant industry, what people are doing to stay safe, how they're serving their community. And, um, and, and I just want to get some, some tips and tricks and things from you guys, uh, what you're doing and, uh, to make few people feel comfortable and then, uh, moving forward, uh, in the next few months and maybe even the next year, uh, on, on safety and sanitation. So Steve, I'll start with you. Restaurants were open for dining services earlier this week. Uh, what has been the initial response and are restaurants opening have, are, have people visited them? Well, well, thank you, Mark, and it's good to be in the company of, of both uh, Mike and, and Jared. So, gentlemen, hello to you. Uh, I will tell you that we have had a robust start, uh, Mark. It's been wonderful uh, to not only see the smiles in their eyes of our, of our servers and our, what we call our restaurant family, uh, their, their smiles are on their face. Sometimes you can't see the smiles on their face because they have masks on, but you can certainly see the excitement uh, in their eyes to, to be reopened. A few months ago, I, I was uh, at a board meeting for the National Restaurant Association who I, I've got to sit on their board for some time and I was with Dick Marriott. And Dick Marriott was telling us at the time, never forget, we are the industry of happy. And, and that's what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing in this reopening of our dining rooms. You're seeing us be happy. You're seeing us serve those folks uh, that have come to rely on us day in and day out. And it's been very rewarding. It's a little bit of a different landscape. We are honoring the, the right distancing. We, you aren't seeing items on uh, tables as you would in the past with salt and pepper shakers, salt, sweet and low, those types of things, Tabasco. Uh, so yeah. I don't think we'll see this forever. Uh, but we are being responsible as an industry and the safety and security and comfort of our guests is job one. Well, thanks, Steve. I, you know, I, I've heard that uh, in just passing with folks that they're, they're eager to get back to work. I know that uh, a lot of folks were out of work for a long time. And so hopefully they're easing back into that. And, and that's really good news. And you're right. It is an industry of happiness. It's where we go congregate. It's where we go have community. So it's good to hear that. And it's good that we're kind of get back and getting back into the swing of things here. Jared, what are you seeing across the, the entire nation uh, with the groups that you're working with uh, as it relates to, to reopening? And how does Chandler compare? Um, you know, I think Chandler in Arizona is, is doing a wonderful job and it's kind of ahead of the curve. You know, as of this morning, there's 28 states that have restaurants open right now to some varying capacity of what that looks like. I just returned back last Friday evening from New Hampshire where we're opening a restaurant next week um, and was in Cape Cod. And, you know, w working with folks like yourself and with Steve and local government and the, and the restaurant associations, I think, you know, anytime you have support from local government, you're able to help move that needle a little faster. A, there's some accountability, but again, uh, in Cape Cod, they closed down Main Street um, to car traffic and said, you know what, we can't open the restaurants, but we're gonna drag all the tables into the middle of the street and we're gonna bring people together safely 
and securely and figure out somewhere to put the cars. Um, and so again, that took a lot of help from local government to be able to pull something like that off. Um, we see some states that are moving a little faster than others and maybe not in the safest manner, but I think what we're seeing in Chandler and Gilbert and the East Valley, um, we've got owners and operators like Mike and folks like Steve that are really helping add a support layer to say, here's the things that we can do to not just keep our guests safe. And again, we're not just talking about re or restaurants. We got retail, we've got other things opening and not just how do we keep our guests safe, but how do we keep our staff safe? These guys are at home right now collecting checks and we want them to come back to work, but we want them to come back to work and feel comfortable in the space that they're in and feel supported. So I think, again, we're very progressive in how we're doing it, but we're doing it very safely from what we're seeing in other cities across the country. Jared, you make a really good point about combining safety and, and, and moving everything forward and, and people that uh, are ready to get back to work. I'm really interested in hear more about that Cape Cod uh, opportunity. We've got some open space in downtown Chandler and other places throughout Chandler. And I'll tell you what, you know, government d does a lot during crisis to take uh, opportunities and liberties away. Maybe there's an opportunity to uh, add some liberty as it relates to using some of those open spaces. Matter of fact, Mike, you've got a green space right out in front of Crust. Maybe I'll uh, knock on the city manager's door and see what it would look like to uh, set some tables out there allow for more uh, for more tables and more social distancing but what are you seeing downtown as far as patronage are, are you uh, are gas venturing out or are you are you seeing business so yeah I we are um, you know I think on Monday none of us knew what to expect right we opened up for lunch and we were everybody was just sort of waiting eagerly and I think it's about just communicating and we're really trying to do a good job of communicating with our staff you know they were you know like Steve and, and Jared both said uh, you know everybody's so excited but how we communicate with our staff about yes being excited but safety first and really what we're telling our guests and what they're telling us is what we're trying to understand um you know gloves and masks and the new norm of sanitizers and you know for us it's not the salt and pepper but it's the parmesan cheese and red pepper on the tables so i think this new norm is going to is going to be there for a long long time i i don't think you know we were always sanitary every restaurant was quote unquote sanitary prior to but now we're moving into a way that being so deliberate to make sure everybody understands that we're sanitary is one thing, but it is truly becoming more of our, our ethics and our beliefs. And like, like it is our sole responsibility to really take this um, and not only show our guests, show our staff and the position of being a leader. If we want to be a staple in a downtown community or at a restaurant, it's our responsibility to our staff and our guests that we're doing this, not to show them that, hey, we're doing this now, but this became the new norm. Um, I think some guests, there, there's a very difference of opinions. I feel like there's some people that say, hey, it's way too early, but then there's, you know, we had the people at 11.05 going, oh, give me a drink, and, and, you know, and, and, and then you have everybody in between. You know, I, I, I was sitting around, um, sitting around and trying to talk to guests. And even last night I had dinner at the bar by myself and we were, you know, obviously six feet away and just sat there and, and just took, just to watch. Um, we have been starting to get a little bit more crowded every day we have progressed. And I think this weekend is going to be a really, it's going to be a good guiding point. Um, to your point, the outside parks area and that green space right next to Crust. There's there's so many opportunities that I would love to see us try to expand on because everybody wants to be outside. And even though it's a little bit warmer, you know, because we get spoiled, we want to be outside at 82 and 83, but after that it's hot. Um, they want this perfect Arizona weather, which is great. But I do believe that people are more confident um, as we all are just being outside. So I think there's opportunities, you know, as we move and, you know, taking advantage in this weekend is going to be a beautiful weekend, hopefully next week, you know, and we have a, an opportunity to do some more things outside for the entire community. That's great. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I know the mayor, so I might actually uh, <laughs> give him a ring about that green space out there. We'll get, uh, we'll see what we can happen. So I think restaurant owners and, and patrons that, that may watch this video, are wondering how the Restaurant Association, Steve, how we're working with them to, to, to implement safety measures, if there's a guideline, if there's a place they can go, 
um, that we're using to keep patrons healthy. And I was really interested, Mike, in what you said is like, you're listening to the consumer. Uh, you're listening to the people that are in your restaurant to say, okay, what can we do better? What's going to make you feel more secure? And I've been doing videos for my clients that is basically, it's all about, their brand is all about safety. It's all about telling people what they do for a living or what they do for business. When they come into their doors, they're going to be safe. And it sounds like you're already on that. But Steve, what are you doing with the restaurants uh, to, to make sure they're implementing safe measures? Well, first and foremost, I will share with you what Mike and Jared just explained is a definition and illustration of the innovation and entrepreneurial style of our industry. Restaurateurs, I grew up in the car business here in Arizona. You know, restaurateurs are the most innovative and entrepreneurial people I have ever come to know. Mm -hmm. And that's almost, yeah, that you could take that to the bank. That's a fact. So mm -hmm. to Mike's point, a, a few things. In, in working, Mark, with Governor Ducey in his office, uh, they had recommended, we have been discussing, uh, what about uh, going to 50% of occupancy in a restaurant? I said, well, first and foremost, where do you get the 50%? Is it Dr. Fossey? Is it Fox News? Is it CNN? It's arbitrary. It's an arbitrary number. If Mike and his restaurant can accommodate 60% safely in his, in his dining room, he should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, what we wanted to be certain of is that we did not put this one-size-fits-all mandate on the restaurant industry. It would not have worked. It makes no sense to do so. And I think the guidelines that came out from Governor Ducey, the guidelines that we uh, dovetail together, coupled together with theirs, is what we believe is very responsible. So it's some of the things we've just mentioned. Uh, it's making sure that you are ensuring that your staff is safe when they come to work a shift, right? That they don't have any COVID-like symptoms, they don't have a temperature and those things. So we're really stressing that. Uh, and, and look, I think Mike said it uh, earlier that hygiene has always been job one for us, it's of utmost importance, we've ratcheted that, that up. Now here's what I will might differ from, from uh, my colleagues on the, on the webinar with is, or the Zoom call, is that I don't believe this is gonna be around forever. Let's, let's go back to 9-11, a sad occasion for this, uh, for this country, and you had the TSA uh, follow, right? You had, then you had TSA pre-check, right? Then you had a lifting of some of these things. I believe as we move forward, uh, within the next 12 months or so, you're going to still see these sanitation precautions abundantly present in restaurants. However, what might go away eventually, sooner rather than later, is the, the masks in the front of the house. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people, it's voluntary. You don't have to do it. You'll probably see that disappear. You might see a few items coming in. Uh, what I think I, I agree with Mike on is you are going to have technology and other things that will emerge from this that will be with us for the future. To go ordering, it's always been a byproduct of what we do. Uh, it's now going to be center plate as long with uh, filling our dining room. So I, I believe restaurateurs are going to have to make sure they can manage uh, and structure a, a good protocol for how they can take in to go orders and get them out the door while still operating a full dining room. No, it makes sense. And, and you know, you're just touching on it again. It's the restaurateurs that are entrepreneurial, that are innovative in protecting their staff and their customers are going to win market share. They're going to win business. And are you seeing that nationally? And Jared, what, what are your thoughts? You know, we really are. And I agree with Steve 100%. I think some of this stuff is, is immediate, right? So National Restaurant Consultants created a 54-page business plan with addendums with checklists for taking temperatures of staff, uh, you know, sick call logs that to a large degree we should have had all along. Um, but sharing those with operators around the country free of charge and saying, look, guys, all of our past and present clients, here's kind of the new normal for right now. Um, if you have chosen to not do catering, now's the time to jump. Um, and at the same time on social media and web, if you're not updating your website and telling your folks what you're doing, and if you're only on social media saying I have takeout and showing the Tuesday burger special, everyone has that. Um, how are we keeping our guests safe? And when they get to the restaurant, are we actually training and being super diligent with having folks on the floor that are making sure we do what we say we do? Because if I promise any one of us on the Zoom call right now that I'm wiping down every touchable surface ever after every guest leaves the room and the mom with the family of four comes in and the table gets up and we don't do that, we've lost that guest. We've lost that trust. Um, so pre-shift meetings, post-shift meetings, you know, following the standards that we've put in place are 
far more important today than they have been in the past with some maybe some silent uh, adherence to just assuming that that stuff happened. But, uh, you know, again, I agree with Steve. I think this is going to have huge changes over the next 12 months. But at least initially, there's a lot of folks that are scared to go back out. And we as operators have to put systems in place for our teams and for our customers and clients and, and guests to make sure that uh, once they walk through those doors, we can still not only deliver that great product, but make them feel safe eating it. Well, every, every, every comment in this discussion so far has been about safety. And, and Jared, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Mike, what are you doing specifically uh, in the restaurant? So uh, we can move forward, guests can come back to downtown Chandler where we're, we're, uh, we're eager to, to, to welcome them. So, you know, our new norm um, is basically everything we've talked about. We have the, uh, the blue um, gloves that, that can be seen from, you know, quote unquote, a mile away type of thing. Um, we have our kitchen staff wearing masks and we decided not to have our front of the house wear masks. Um, we do have the option, obviously, if they're comfortable, we're um, following the guidelines and taking everybody's temperature and, and logging it. Um, and the reason why I decided, or we as a company decided not to do masks is we really, over the last week, from, from the guidelines when uh, Governor Ducey started talking about this, we started really talking to people and we asked them, how do you feel? We started asking, you know, friends, neighbors, colleagues, staff, and we heard it was a very split decision. Um, we have asked guests if they're comfortable for your server to wear a mask, would you care for that? Um, we're, we're really trying to go about this in a new way. And, you know, we ha we've heard so many comments of, well, if you walk into a restaurant, you don't want to feel like you're in a hospital. And that was like the biggest one for me. And that was like, you know, so we're doing everything. We're sanitizing. We're sanitizing every table, chair, every touchable surface. We, we added some sanitizer stations. We're doing, um, uh, making sure every three times an hour, we're actually changing gloves. So we have different, different words that we're using. Hey, guys, it's pickle time. Okay. And just little things that, you know, as Jared said, pre-shift and post-shift, that's, you know, when I hear something like that, we know there's a restaurant guy deep down in there. And, you know, during our pre-shifts, we're just talking about, hey, guys, you know, today's word is this. And we're actually just trying to have a little bit of fun with it. What that is, is every 20 minutes, we're trying to change. We are changing our gloves as a staff at the, at the minimum. So, you know, obviously a, a sneeze or a cough is like an alarm. It's a very different, it's a very different um, opportunity. And we're just trying to, just trying to move forward correctly and keeping everybody comfortable. Um, the steps that I believe that we will follow, I believe that there's going to be sanitizer stations, you know, throughout my restaurant. I don't think they'll ever come down. I don't think the way of being so deliberate and so cautious will ever stop from this point on. You know, we always wipe down our cheese and peppers and our chairs, but not to this degree and not to this level of detail and not because you had to do it because this is now our obligation to our, our community. Well, that's, that's well said. It's, it's an obligation. And, and I think that's changing the dining experience in Arizona. It's changing the dining experience nationally. And it's changing right here in Chandler. Gentlemen, I am absolutely grateful <clears throat> that you've been able to share some of these stories. I'm going to leave sort of the last few words, you know, keep it, uh, keep it short because we're running a little bit over here. Um, but, you know, Steve, Jared, Mike, uh, we'll go in that order. Just kind of give me your last thoughts and then I'll wrap us up here. Well, I love your extension of premise idea, Mark. I'll tell you, the city of Phoenix has reached out to us on that. Many cities are looking at doing this. Uh, and I, I think that would be a great coup for us. And to Mike, I would just share with him that uh, I am getting 20 to 30 calls a day. And some restaurants who are not providing masks to the front of the house, we, we are hearing from guests that they appreciate that and they prefer not to have it. I have not had a call yet that has said, uh, we want servers wearing masks. So whatever it's worth, I want to make sure I impart that to both uh, Mike and Jared. And thank you for having me on this. It's really great that you've done this, Council Member. Thank you. Well, no, I'm, I'm grateful. And if, if you got the governor's ear, you know, that, that extension of premises for 90 days, maybe you could give him a little yeah. nudge. Uh, there you go. A liquor license so somebody can, somebody can uh, leave the ostrich and go sit in the grass out front and have a beer or have a, have a glass of wine with their, with their friends and family. That, that would be nice. So, uh, Jared, any final thoughts? 
Yeah, I have two real, real quick. And one, I think Steve nailed it at the very beginning and said we're the industry of fun. And then Mike followed it up with the mass. I think it's important that nationally our operators are talking to the guests. So ultimately we want to do what's best for the guests that are coming through the door. But at the same time, I went to a fabulous Chandler restaurant last night and the experience was great. The food was great. I mean, it was top notch. Management was great, but they all had masks on. I missed that smile. I'm going to go spend a couple hundred bucks. I want you to smile at me. I missed the, I missed the smile. That's why I wanted to go. So very uh, for any operator that tests the waters and doesn't do the mask. Um, second to that, Mark, you have my email. Steve, you know how to get a hold of me. Any operator that wants any of the tools that we have, they're free of any cost. We're happy to share that business plan and any of the checklists that are all modifiable and uh, something that best suits the business. So anybody who's looking for something like that or another layer through the National Restaurant Association or through the CDC, um, we've compiled some of that and we're happy to share. But again, I think you, Mark, and uh, everyone on this panel for allowing me to be a part of it today. So thank you. Jared, that's great. And Morgan, can we f circle up with Jared and get that information on this, uh, on this thread? If he's got a link or something like that, Mike, take us home and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pull the shoot on this one. Well, first and foremost, thank you for, uh, for inviting me to this. I thought this was, was excellent. Um, the extension of premise, you know, from my position, it shouldn't be something that we're asking for. It should be something that is given because of what it does to the community. Um, it seems like an ask and, and like, Hey, please, can we get this? Well, Th those are the details that I get those bureaucracy and I get the red tape of things, but understand from, from our point, it, it, we're, we're here for the people. That is the better thing for the people. It's outside, it's six feet away, you have a grass, you have a park. I mean, these to me are the easy things that we really should be doing. And if there's anything I could do, you know, from a support standpoint or a logistics standpoint, um, any one of our neighbors, I mean, those are the things. Um, I, 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 I think communicating, I think what Jared just said about the smile, I think that perseveres over everything else. Um, let's hope that obviously this doesn't come back. Let's understand that this is a new norm. Um, if there's ever a time to support those small business, come down to Crust or the Ostrich, you know, this is the time. You know, this week is going to be a funny week. Next week will be a funny week. You know, I'm concerned or cautiously optimistic of how we, uh, you know, move through the summer in Arizona, right? As we're temperatures in July are 110 degrees, it's tough enough to break even, right? It really is tough enough in the restaurant industry just to break even. Now we're adjusting and we're doing things and that's on us as entrepreneurs. And I get that. We're, we love doing that. But the community has been amazing. Um, you know, I guess it's, it's a little scary to see what's going to go on here. Um, but we have to push through. This is why we are, you know, who we are. And this is what we're, we're excited to do it. So thank you again. Um, Steve, Jared, thank you for, for your insight as well. And Mark, thank you for, for keeping me a part of this. Well, it's, it, it's actually absolutely my pleasure. And as, as a Chandler City Council member, I've said it over and over and I'll continue to say that, that whatever we can do at the city, to remove barriers, to help entrepreneurs and good people be successful. We are going to deliver that every single time. So I'm already communicating internally within the city to remove some of those barriers, to extend premises, to, to find a way that we can be a facilitator and not a regulator for our business owners in this time and in every time. And that's why I ran for office. That's why I will continue to have these, these uh, meetings. And I'm just grateful for you guys sharing your intellectual property with our community. And uh, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Have a great day and, and good selling. Thank you. Thank you so much.